In this module, we'll cover the gate location analysis. The goal of this module will be to review gate placement guidelines, as well as to help determine an optimum gate location. Why should we do this? The gate location is a critical factor in the overall park quality. There are a few simple steps to setting up a gate location analysis, so just to summarize, you'll want to create your project, we'll import your model, You'll want to orient that model so your parting plane or intended parting plane is parallel to your XY plane in the software. You'll specify any prohibited gate regions if that's applicable. You'll set the analysis sequence to gate location. If you're using our old gate region locator algorithm, then you can also set select the material, specify your process settings, and set an injection location as an option. From there, you'll run your analysis. Now there are two gate location analysis algorithms that you have the option between. So the default algorithm is going to be our advanced gate locator. This is going to find the optimum injection locations based on minimizing flow resistance. So it'll find optimal injection locations for the lowest injection pressure. It can add up to 10 gates for you. It requires no existing gates on the part and can be recommended for new mold designs. You also have access to an optional algorithm for the gate location analysis. It's our traditional gate region locator algorithm. This is gonna find the optimal injection location based more on a balanced flow. It'll look at the mold melt temperature as well as injection pressure limits. We typically recommend this one for existing molds that may require some changes to them. The reason we say this is because you can specify an injection location and then run this algorithm with that injection location on there. When you do that, it'll find the second best location. So maybe you have a tool with one gate location and you're finding you're exceeding your filling pressures. So you may want to add a second gate. This would be a great way to find the second best location while still taking into account your original injection location. So there's the gate location analysis wizard tab that we're looking at here. You can see, very simple to set up. You're basically going to select the algorithm you wish to use in that drop down. Is it going to be the advanced gate locator or is it going to be the gate region locator analysis? If you pick the advanced gate locator analysis, you'll have an additional option to specify the number of gates from 1 up through 10. So one of the assumptions with the advanced gate locator analysis that we should be aware of is that it's going to exclude thin regions as possible gating locations. What do we view as a thin region? Well, we take a look at the part's nominal wall and we have a fixed value that says we shouldn't gate in any areas that are basically 25% of the part's nominal wall thickness. The advanced gate location analysis allows you to also set prohibited gate regions. What this allows you to do is specify areas on the part where no injection location should be placed. So let's say for example you have a part with a cosmetic surface. The solver does not know that that's a cosmetic surface, so this is the way you let it know that. When specifying these, you can specify a tolerance angle as well. And what this is doing is just basically controlling your selection. So a lower tolerance that you specify here results in more of a precise selection on your part surface, whereas a higher tolerance angle selects a broader selection area. When assigning prohibited gate regions, we cover there's a tolerance angle selection method but there's also a clipped selection method. I use this one very commonly. So what this allows you to do is you essentially just band select your model or the, in the areas that you wish to assign your prohibited gate regions. The only option that you have in this case would be to either check the near side only box or to have it unchecked. If it's checked, what that means is when you select the face of that part, it only selects the elements on the face of that part. If you uncheck it, it's going to select the elements or the surfaces facing you as well as the ones on the back side. So it will select elements all the way through the part through your band selection. So please keep that in mind when making using this tool. 
When using the advanced gate locator algorithm, you'll have two possible results to look at. The first is the flow resistance indicator. This indicates the pressure requirements that it would take to fill your part at a given location. So, in this example, the red regions would require the highest injection pressures to fill this part geometry. The blue regions, they would require the least amount of pressure or injection pressure to fill your part. If you're only looking or trying to generate one gate, then you also receive a gating suitability plot. This does quite simply as it states. It's going to highlight areas that are most suitable for you to gate in. So these blue areas are the best. Any red areas would be the worst places. So we spoke quite a bit on the advanced gate location algorithm already. So now we'll cover the second algorithm, the gate region locator analysis algorithm. So this one has some other considerations that it does take into account. First one is processability. Will the part fill? Minimum pressure. Will the pressure be low? Lower pressures usually mean lower shear rates and shear stresses and clamp tonnage. So it will try to minimize your pressures. Geometric resistance. It will take a look at your part. Will there be overpacking if the gate is located here or not? Thickness. If the gate is here, will there be effective packing? So it does tend to stay away from thinner regions as well. When using the gate region locator, there is an assumption that you should be aware of. It will try to minimize pressure by picking the best injection location, but our maximum that we can go to is based off 80% of the machine limit. What's the machine limit? Well, that's specified in your analysis wizard. The default is 180 megapascal. So if you're running on a much smaller machine, then you might want to adjust this setting. When using the gate region locator algorithm, this is going to give you one result. It's going to give you the best gate location result. This is much like the one we saw previously in the other algorithm, and it's going to give you the areas that are going to be the best places to gate in or the worst place to gate in. Like with either of these algorithms, it's very important when you're reviewing these results to make sure that they are practical for your application. The solver, again, does not know where your Cosmax services are. It does not know your gating restrictions. So, even though you may have the best location in the center of this part, maybe we have to pick the second best location because of tooling concerns or molding issues. So, this is another tool in the toolbox. It's not a black box that will simply give you an answer. All right, now that we've gone through both algorithms, you may be asking yourself, which one should we use? Well, there's a process that we kind of would recommend in that case. First, you want to establish your analysis objectives before running the analysis. You know, is this an existing tool that we need to troubleshoot or fix something with? Or is this a new tool? From there, you'll run your gate location analysis. If there are still concerns about which one you should use, run them both. They both run fairly fast. Once you run your gate location analysis, we always recommend running a quick fill analysis to see how that really works out for you. If it's not quite what you expected, then you can adjust your gates to a more reasonable location depending on the requirements that you have to fulfill and rerun that fill analysis. And again, iterative process. We'll take a look at the part quality again. It's always much cheaper and really the general purpose of the software is to try to find these issues and troubleshoot. It's always cheaper to make mistakes in an analysis than it is in real life. Now that you've taken a look at the gate location analysis, there are also some gate selection criteria that you should keep in mind when choosing your gate location. You always want to facilitate a uniform and balanced filling within your part. You want to avoid weld lines, especially in weaker regions of the part or areas that could be visible. Gate in thicker sections away from thin sections to avoid packing issues. Direct gates against the wall. This will prevent any jetting issues. You should prevent air traps in areas that cannot be vented in your part. 
And also keep in mind, gate location restrictions you may have. Are there cosmetic concerns or areas that you cannot gate in because of that? Are there tooling concerns? Or are there molding issues that you need to consider? How many gate location algorithms are available to you? Which gate location algorithm focuses strictly on minimizing flow resistance to achieve the lowest pressure? The gate region locator algorithm takes which of the following into consideration? The prohibited gate region option can be used for either algorithm, true or false. When reviewing your results, you should consider that the gate location determined as the best may not always be practical for your application, true or false. Let's start by browsing to an existing project and we'll take a look at some of the best places to put a gate on this existing model. In this particular case, let's go to Open Project and let's browse to the specific location where our training files now exist. Remember we added our Autodesk Learning folder, our Autodesk Moldflow folder, and now we can take a look at our Gate Location folder where we'll open the existing .mpa project. Simply open this project up and you'll notice some existing files that already exist in here. Let's start by taking a look at the cluster. Simply double click on the cluster study, the model will automatically open. We're going to start with the assumption that we're going to build this model using a standard two plate tool and a cold runner system. That will limit our geometry capabilities for placing a gate to somewhere around the perimeter of this particular part. With the model open, double check that our unit system is set to metric. Again, remembering the easiest way to change our unit system is to use either the View tab from the ribbon interface or to use the Application button and the Options to select our units. Remembering that the Unit Scale system will show the default global unit specified inside of the scaling bar at the bottom, indicating at this point we are dealing with metric again confirmed by our view tab right here on the screen. Because we know some of the limitation of our existing geometry from the constraints that we just discussed, a two plate tool with a cold runner system will not allow us to put injection locations anywhere in the middle of this particular part. We need to define a boundary condition limiting those areas off of the analysis inside of the software. You'll notice that underneath the Home tab in the Ribbon system, we have a Boundary Conditions button. By selecting the Boundary Conditions button, the Boundary Conditions tab will activate, allowing us to select either injection locations or prohibit current gate locations on the model. In this case, we'd like to prohibit these locations, simply select Prohibit Gate Locations, and select the face in which you would like to prohibit. You notice that the Tools tab has now become active on the screen, allowing me to pick the faces that I now want to prohibit from being regions to place a gate. Select the front side of the model so that it turns red, and rotate to the back side and pick the same face on the reverse of the model. This now indicates to the geometry that these are locations not allowable to place a gate. You'll also see two regions now selected inside of the prohibit gate regions inside of the dialog window in the Tools panel. Select Close from the Tools panel and select Finish Boundary Conditions inside of the tab. This now takes us directly back to the Home tab inside of the Ribbon system allowing us to select our Analysis Wizard. The Analysis Wizard button exists right here inside the panel Select it, it will now give us the ability to select the type of analysis we would like to run on our existing model. In this particular case, because we would like to know our gate location, we're going to select the gate location analysis. Simply select Next. It will then ask us how many injection locations we would like to put on this particular model and what analysis we would like to use. Please note that the advanced gate location analysis will be used by default and could be changed to the gate region locator. However, the advanced gate locator is what we'd like to use. And in this particular model, we wouldn't want just one gate, we'd actually like to have three. 
Please specify the number of gates to be three and select Analyze. Much like we've done in previous lessons, we could simply hit Finish and start the analysis manually, but we want to start the analysis automatically, just select the Analyze button from right inside the wizard. You'll again notice the progress bar updating across the bottom of the screen, first processing the model, and then calculating the gate location as part of the algorithm. Once the analysis completes, of course you'll see the analysis complete window pop up in front of the screen, as well as the summary window indicating the initial process setup, and the gate location analysis indicating the location for the three injection locations recommended on the model. With the analysis complete, select the Tasks tab across the top, turn off the summary window, and display the flow resistance indicator. This now highlights the model, showing the blue locations as the best places to put a gate. Again, interrogate the model to take a look at these. Again, using the navigation bar on the right side of the screen, and the view cube as necessary. Then right click on the result, go to properties, and change this from a simple shaded output to a contour. By changing to the contour plot, this will allow us to more clearly visualize where the gate locations could be on the model based on the analysis. You'll notice by zooming in, I can very clearly see the center point that is now recommended for the injection location. Often it's even recommended to running a filling analysis based on the existing injection locations. The easiest way to do this is simply turn the summary window back on, go to the gate location tab that exists inside of the summary window, and tell it to perform the fill analysis simply by using the perform fill analysis button. When selecting this button, we'll ask if we would like to use the existing study to perform the analysis by deleting the current results or creating a copy of the existing file and running the analysis there. Please create a copy of the existing file by using the create copy button. This will automatically create a copy inside of our study tasks pane, giving us a new study inside of the project and automatically starting the analysis sequence at the bottom. We can see the progress of the filling as it takes place during the calculation on the model. Again, with the analysis complete, we can now investigate the filling results that have resulted from our optimal injection location. Again, remember from the summary window, we can see the general tab with the existing setup process, the filling with our resultant filling calculations, and also our cost advisor for any cost estimations we may wish to do on manufacturing this component. We can now also investigate the model to find detailed pieces of information. Again, remembering to turn off the summary window to get a larger view of the model. Rotate the model to appropriately see all the detail required. Let's select Fill Time. Select our Results tab and animate the filling of this particular file. Please note that the filling starts from each injection location until the part completely fills. Remembering that sometimes a more clear view of the filling pattern is to change it by going to the properties, again by right clicking on fill time, and changing this to a contour view. By viewing this as contours, we can now see any increases or decreases in speed, as well as locations where the melt fronts may meet. In this particular case, we might be interested in the location of weld lines on the model. Results can be overlaid on top of each other, again by right-clicking on the result 
and using the overlay command. Weld lines can now be visualized on top of the model as well as the filling pattern. Remember to use your navigation bar on the right side of the screen to zoom in and out appropriately and view all of the details as needed. Please note that weld lines are the current active result and by animating the result giving me the ability to see the higher and lower degrees at which the weld line is formed. Remembering that the highest degree is a good indication of where the weakest spots would be in the weld. Let's now take a look at some of the other results generated from this filling animation. By going back to our home view, we can take a look at things like our frozen layer fraction, giving us a view of how frozen or solid the material is getting at the end of fill. In this particular case, you notice that about 44% frozen in some locations, with upwards of 30% happening around the majority of the model. In many cases, finding locations of high freezing also gives us an indication of problems packing. In some cases, examining the model will help us find these locations, allowing us to determine locations where we may have packing issues later on. Remembering that the higher the value, the more frozen the material is. Continue investigating other results like injection pressure, temperature to evaluate any potential problems that may exist from the existing injection locations. In many cases alternative injection locations can also be selected. For example, let's take a look at the cluster fill ABS. This is an existing study that exists within this project. If we open this up you'll notice that alternative injection locations have been specified on the same model. Based on the gate location analysis we can see that some of these injection locations are slightly more appropriate. These all fall within the constraints of a two-plate tool and a cold runner system. Take a quick view of all results that could be critical to this geometry. For example, fill time. Remembering that changing the property display to contours can sometimes be very informative by wet injection pressure, temperature flow front, and any other result that would seem appropriate to the model you're viewing. Because we've already run a previous configuration on this model, sometimes a comparison is extremely helpful. In this particular case, let's go to the View tab inside of the ribbon system and let's change the existing view so that we can see both models side by side. In this case, we're not going to split the window, we're actually going to tile it and we're going to tile horizontally. This will give us the ability to visualize both models together. We can now see our new model on top, our previous model below, and we can even set up specific locks so that as one model gets modified, the other does the same thing. For example, let's lock all views together. By locking the views, if I rotate one or zoom one, I can actually see the model updating in both windows. Let's then lock the plots together. By locking all plots together, if I change the result on one screen, the other goes with it. For example, by looking at fill time, I can see a very quick comparison of the differences in fill. I can also compare weld lines, frozen layer fraction, and any other result that may be important to the simulation. Please note that by simply changing the injection location, we've decreased the amount of freezing from 44% in some locations to 8%, giving us a much more effective pack profile, allowing us to fill this model much more effectively and compensate for shrinkage. Continue to investigate the results of these two models and take note of all the ways that the cluster fill ABS model is better than our existing three injection locations from our gate location analysis. 
Now that you've finished watching this presentation, as well as the demo video, please feel free to try these exercises and practice your skills. Additional information on where to access these can be found in the introduction presentation. Thank you.